I'm not ashamed. What would be unclean if a man became unclean due to a bodily discharge? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Leviticus on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Leviticus chapter 15. We're going to be reading verses 1 to 12. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Leviticus chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in regard to his discharge, whether his body runs with his discharge or his body is stopped up by his discharge, it is his uncleanness. Every bed is unclean on which he who has the discharge lies, and everything on which he sits shall be unclean. And whoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. He who sits on anything on which he who has the discharge shall sat shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And he who touches the body of him who has the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rise shall be unclean. Whoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until evening. He who carries any of these things shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever the one who has the discharge touches and has not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. The vessel of earth that he who has the discharge touches shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. Having spent the last 12 episodes of our study of Leviticus dealing with leprosy, the uncleanness associated with it and its removal, we now come to chapter 15. The overall topic of uncleanness and its removal remains the same, as does the, as does the theme of holiness before God. Remember, the Law of Moses was a physical law with a physical tabernacle, physical priests, and physical sacrifices. Therefore, if one was to be able to participate in these sacrifices, they must be considered physically clean under the law in order to approach a holy God. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about some topics that might make some people uncomfortable. But rest assured, they will be discussed in a way befitting of a Christian and will bring to light just what it meant to be considered clean under the Law of Moses. Specifically, this chapter deals with the different things that our bodies discharge and what was to be done when that occurred. Verse 2 says that when a man has a discharge from his body, the discharge is unclean. The use of the word man here shows that God was not a sexist under this law, declaring women to be unclean but not men. What is meant by the term discharge is unclear. Some conclude that these diseases were sexually transmitted, like gonorrhea. But to make these the only topic under consideration here, I believe, is speculative. For there are other things that secrete from our body that could be described as discharges, like blood. No, it was the discharge that was described as unclean. However, because of this discharge, the person who had it was also unclean. And because he is unclean, all that he sits or lies down on is unclean, whether it is in his bed, his chair, his saddle, or anything else. This does lend credence to the notion that the discharges under consideration have something to do with that below the waist. For the passage does not say that everything this man touches becomes unclean, but even then, all secretions from this area of the body are not sexually transmitted, even though they may be contagious. What would happen if I come in contact with something that this unclean man had been sitting down or lying on? Well, if it was things like his bed, his chair, or his saddle, I would have to wash my clothes, bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. This verse is where we conclude that the washing that was required earlier in Leviticus in order to make oneself clean also included washing the body, even though those passages don't specifically say so. Since someone is unclean simply for touching unclean things, it is thus not a far leap to conclude that since clothing touches the body, that one would also have to wash the body if his clothes were unclean under the law in order to be considered clean. Regardless, though, bodily washing is required explicitly here. The requirement about not touching the bed would prove to be a hardship if this man was married, for it would mean that he could not sleep with his wife until he was clean. However, if whatever this discharge was contagious, one wouldn't think the wife would want to sleep in the same bed as him anyways. But since it would make, since it would make her unclean under the law, this would be doubly so. 
What would happen if I touched a man who was unclean from a discharge? I would be unclean until evening and would have to go and wash myself in water and wash my clothes. What if he touched me? Well, if he washed his hands first, then I would remain clean, but otherwise I would be unclean until evening and have to go and wash myself in my clothes. Today we would call these good hygienic practices. But in that time, although hygiene was possibly a secondary reason, it had to do with uncleanness under the law and the ability to approach a holy God. One could not do so if they carried around diseases like the ones mentioned here, for they were unclean. Our reading concludes by telling us that any earthen vessel that is touched by the man with the discharge was to be broken, while vessels made of wood were to be rinsed in water. Similar commands to what we've read in earlier on in Leviticus. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Leviticus chapter 15, verses 13 to 18, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.